September 15th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Isaiah chapters 46 through 48 of the Old Testament. Bell kneels down, Nebo bends low, their images weigh down animals and beast. Your heavy images are burdensome to tired animals. Together they bend low and kneel down, they are unable to rescue the images. They themselves head off into captivity. Listen to me, O family of Jacob, all you who are left from the family of Israel, you who have been carried from birth, you who have been supported from the time you left the womb. Even when you are old, I will take care of you. Even when you have gray hair, I will carry you. I made you and I will support you. I will carry you and rescue you. To whom can you compare and liken me? Tell me whom you think I resemble so we can be compared. Those who empty out gold from a purse and weigh out silver on the scale hire a metalsmith who makes it into a god. Then they bow down and worship it. They put it on their shoulder and carry it. They put it in its place and it just stands there. It does not move from its place. Even when someone cries out to it, it does not reply. It does not deliver him from his distress. Remember this so you can be brave. Think about it, you rebels. Remember what I accomplished in antiquity. Truly, I am God. I have no peer. I am God and there is none like me. Who announces the end from the beginning and reveals beforehand what has not yet occurred. Who says my plan will be realized. I will accomplish what I desire. Who summons an eagle from the east from a distant land. One who carries out my plan. Yes, I have decreed. Yes, I will bring it to pass. I have formulated a plan. Yes, I will carry it out. Listen to me, you stubborn people, you who distance yourself from doing what is right. I am bringing my deliverance near. It is not far away. I am bringing my salvation near. It does not wait. I will save Zion. I will adorn Israel with my splendor. Fall down, sit in the dirt, O virgin daughter Babylon. Sit on the ground, not on a throne. O daughter of the Babylonians, indeed you will no longer be called delicate and pampered. Pick up millstones and grind flour, remove your veil, strip off your skirt, expose your legs, cross the streams. Let your private parts be exposed, your genitals will be on display. I will get revenge, I will not have pity on anyone. Says our protector, the Lord who commands armies is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Sit silently, go to a hiding place. O daughter of the Babylonians, indeed you will no longer be called queen of kingdoms. I was angry at my people. I defiled my special possession. I handed them over to you. You showed them no mercy. You even placed a very heavy burden on old people. You said, I will rule forever as permanent queen. You did not think about these things. You did not consider how it would turn out. So now listen to this, O one who lives so lavishly, who lives securely, who says to herself, I am unique. No one can compare to me. I will never have to live as a widow. I will never lose my children. Both of these will come upon you suddenly in one day. You will lose your children and be widowed. You will be overwhelmed by these tragedies, despite your many incantations and your numerous amulets. You were complacent in your evil deeds. You thought no one sees me. Your self-professed wisdom and knowledge led you astray. When you say, I am unique, no one can compare to me. Disaster will overtake you. You will not know how to charm it away. Destruction will fall on you. You will not be able to appease it. Calamity will strike you suddenly before you recognize it. Persist in trusting your amulets and your many incantations, which you have faithfully recited since your youth. Maybe you will be successful. Maybe you will scare away disaster. You are tired out from listening to so much advice. Let them take their stand. The ones who see omens in the sky, who gaze at the stars, who make monthly predictions, let them rescue you from the disaster that is about to overtake you. Look, they are like straw, which the fire burns up. They cannot rescue themselves from the heat of the flames. There are no coals to warm them, no firelights to enjoy. They will disappoint you. Those who have so faithfully dealt with you since your youth, each strays off in his own direction, leaving no one to rescue you. Listen to this, O family of Jacob. 
you who are called by the name Israel and are descended from Judah, who take oaths in the name of the Lord and invoke the God of Israel, but not in an honest and just manner. Indeed, they live in the holy city. They trust in the God of Israel, whose name is the Lord who commands armies. I announced events beforehand. I issued the decrees and made the predictions. Suddenly I acted and they came to pass. I did this because I know how stubborn you are. Your neck muscles are like iron and your forehead like bronze. I announced them to you beforehand. Before they happened, I predicted them for you. So you could never say, my image did these things. My idol, my cast image decreed them. You have heard. Now look at all the evidence. Will you not admit that what I say is true? From this point on, I am announcing to you new events that are previously unrevealed and you do not know about. Now they come into being, not in the past. Before today, you did not hear about them. So you could not say, yes, I know about them. You did not hear, you do not know. You were not told beforehand. For I know that you are very deceitful. You were labeled a rebel from birth. For the sake of my reputation, I hold back my anger. For the sake of my prestige, I restrain myself from destroying you. Look, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have purified you in the furnace of misery. For my sake alone, I will act. For how can I allow my name to be defiled? I will not share my glory with anyone else. Listen to me, O Jacob, Israel, whom I summoned. I am the one. I am present at the very beginning and at the very end. Yes, my hand founded the earth. My right hand spread out the sky. I summon them. They stand together. All of you gather together and listen. Who among them announced these things? The Lord's ally will carry out his desire against Babylon. He will exert his power against the Babylonians. I, I have spoken. Yes, I have summoned him. I lead him and he will succeed. Approach me. Listen to this. From the very first, I have not spoken in secret. When it happens, I am there. So now the sovereign Lord has sent me accompanied by his spirit. This is what the Lord, your protector says, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord, your God, who teaches you how to succeed, who leads you in the way you should go. If only you had obeyed my commandments, prosperity would have flowed to you like a river. Deliverance would have come to you like the waves of the sea. Your descendants would have been as numerous as sand and your children like its granules. Their name would not have been cut off and eliminated from my presence. Leave Babylon. Flee from the Babylonians. Announce it with a shout of joy. Make this known. Proclaim it throughout the earth. Say the Lord protects his servant Jacob. They do not thirst as he leads them through dry regions. He makes water flow out of a rock for them. He splits open a rock and water flows out. There will be no prosperity for the wicked, says the Lord. God, we know that your plans will go on with us or without us. As you mentioned, the gods in these couple chapters that just stay in one place and do nothing and require the adoration of the people to be anything you're really clear you don't need our adoration to fulfill your will or move around or do anything it is that you want. And just like you use Babylon uh, to destroy your people uh, and then turned around and destroyed Babylon and punished them for what they did to your people, um, even if somebody's belligerent against you, such as Babylon or your people, um, you can still use them in your plan. So this whole concept of we are either with you and helping your plan and your kingdom and, and moving things forward, or technically we're against you because you're still going to use us in this plan, albeit probably for, for in ways that we don't want to be used. Kind of what you talked about with Babylon uh, of a girl on full display that we may be used in ways that we aren't happy about. Sort of like when people say, well, I don't really want to have an opinion about this, so I'm just not going to say anything. And by not saying anything, they still have an opinion. So by us not intentionally doing things for your kingdom or working for your kingdom, we are by clear definition of what you're talking about, 
not doing things for your kingdom and choosing to uh, be silent. And so you're still going to use us uh, in that process. We think that by, by staying silent and quiet and hiding out uh, that you can't get to us. And that's almost a little bit humorous considering that we know you so intimately that you're sovereign over our lives, that you know everything that's going on. Um, and in those situations, instead of being used for good, we will be used for um, not bad because your plans are for what you need them to have happen, but will be used in ways that that don't necessarily make us, us happy. I'm sure Babylon wasn't happy when you turned on them, nor was Israel happy when you turned on them. So God, today, uh, allow us to understand that we either are in, we're, we're making that full big commitment to you, um, to every day try our best to do what it is that your will is for our life, or if we stay silent, knowing full well that we will still be used for your plan, it just may, may not be in the ways that we, we would like them to be. God, allow us to be for you and not against you as places like Babylon were in the destruction thereof. In your son's name I pray. Amen.